Hey guys, this is Neil with Catalyst Machine Works and Money Shot Cinema. This is the video user manual for our Money Shot Whoop Lifter. If you have purchased one of these or you're considering it, this is a good video to watch. Okay, so let's say you've got the thing in and you're all excited to go out and try it out for the first time, but obviously there's going to be some steps to perform. First of which, is to run power through the system. All right, you've got to run power through it so you can bind to it. Let's go ahead and grab a battery. Here is an example of a uh, common battery. A lot of people are going to use 5100 MAW 6S. Uh, by the way, this takes 6S power. Okay, I suggest anywhere from 4000 milliamp hour up to 5100 milliamp hour. Okay, uh, let me show you what connectors we've got. So you have the option of XT90 or AS150. The AS150 is set up per Jinzase, otherwise known as Tattoo's standard AS150 setup. So if you've got a Jinzase battery, which we can source for you by the way, along with your Whoop Lifter order, if you've got a Jinzase battery, it's going to come with the uh, AS150s laid out like this. Now, of course, on my battery, I've changed it out to XT90. That's just my personal preference. It doesn't matter which of these you use. It's six one way, half a dozen the other. It's just all personal preference. Okay, so you've got it powered up. Now you need to bind your radio to it. Okay, I'm not going to explain in this video the bind procedure. I'm just going to say you need to bind it. Uh, you guys who are purchasing this type of machine, this level of product, should know how to bind. Uh, if you don't, there are plenty of YouTube videos. But I'm going to show you where the bind button is. So here's the receiver right here. You can access it without removing the top plate. So you're going to bind to the receiver and you're good to go there. Now the next step, obviously, is to bind to the video system. This thing comes with the Cadex HD 120 frames per second air unit high definition video system. Okay, so the bind button is on the side here. So you can get something in here and carefully, don't jab the crap out of it. It's pretty, it's pretty fragile. But the little bind button for the air unit is on the side. You can access it through here. Okay, so that gets you bound up to the craft. All right, once you are bound up, you're going to have to uh, go into iNav, plug into, the, uh, plug into the craft, go into iNav on your computer, and set up your modes, all right, and possibly set up the receiver tab. I'm going to show you how to do that at the end of this video, but before we get to that, I'm going to explain some of the different features of the craft and how to use it, all right? So first thing I'll discuss is the camera mount. Okay, so your cinema camera obviously mounts onto here. I'm going to be using for this example the popular, probably the most popular cinema camera that's uh, used these days for FPV cinema, and that's the red Komodo. Okay, the Komodo has got quarter dash 20 or 3 8 dash 16. So this mount can accept both. If you look here, this slot is for quarter 20. There are four screws, one, two, three, four. You can take those out. Then this little adapter plate falls out and then you can use 3 8 16. If you use 3 8 16 screw with a lock washer on this camera, it is not going anywhere, <laughs> all right? There is so much pressure holding this camera on, it, it, it's just not gonna go anywhere. Now, another option, if you're too freaked out about using a single screw is you can use a quick release, okay? So a, uh, a quick release base plate. A very popular one that a lot of our customers are using that's super lightweight is from Small Rig, all right? So I'm gonna show it here, okay? And this one, this particular model can be found all over the net. So in that way, you're going to then attach by way of two quarter 20 screws to the top of this plate, and then you attach your camera to that. And so that'll allow you to quickly release it 
and then go use it on another piece of equipment and then put it back quickly. That's a really nice, really nice little, uh, little benefit of using a quick release like that. Now, if you want to change the angle, it's really simple. You've got these screws here, okay? So this is a, I believe it's 3.5 millimeter. Uh, and you get your Allen key in here and loosen one, two, three, four. And then you have the option of running from an angle of zero all the way up to 30. Okay. Now, powering your camera. This bird includes a step down or UBEC for powering this XD60, which then can be, can be used to power your camera. In the case of the Red Komodo, it uses 12 volt a very rational voltage. Some cameras like Sony use like 19.5. What on God's green earth were they thinking with that? But anyway, so for most cameras, this UBEC will work as is. Okay, so uh, what you would do, we sell these as well. This is an adapter XT60 to two pin plug for the, uh, for the Komodo. All right, so you're gonna plug this in here. All right. And then plug it into the Komodo like that. Now, depending on what kind of camera you've got, you know, you're gonna have different types of adapters. If you have a special requirement, we can make it up for you. Just let us know what you need and we can get it done. Let's say that you have a Sony FS6. That is a very popular and fantastic, it is a fantastic camera, besides the weird voltage they chose. Um, there's actually a connection or connector that has a little, a little voltage uh, step up in the middle. So it gets it from like 12 volts, I believe, or 14.4 up to 19.5 on this end, on the end that goes into your FS6. This UBEC, which is situated right here, you can change the voltage on it, okay? To access it, you're gonna have to take these screws out that hold the, the vibration dampers on, and that holds the uh, top plate on. So take all of those out, take this off, then you have access to this, this UBEC right here. Then you can set the dip switches to whatever you want. So it'll go from, I believe it's seven volts all the way up to 16 volts. So let's say that you wanted to run the FS6. You're gonna use an XT60 adapter to the one. This is actually the adapter I'm talking about. Put it on the screen right here. Okay, so you can get a hold of that adapter and you can put it, you know, wire up an XT60 to it. Or we can do it for you. Set your U back to the right voltage and now you're powering the FS6. All right, so that's how that works. Now I do want to mention that there's another UBEC here. Don't mess, there's dip switches on this one. Do not mess with that. It's powering your video system. All right, speaking of cameras, we've got this FPV camera in the front here. If you want to change the angle of that one, a lot of people like to change the angle of their FPV camera to match the angle on the cinema camera. You're gonna loosen these four little M2 screws, two on either side. There are little angle indicator uh, markings here that tell you what angle you're at. All right, so loosen it up, tighten it back, and then you're good to go with that. Another thing that's going to be pretty obvious, but I'm going ahead and state it, is that the uh, machine comes without these Axie antennas installed. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and install those. And obviously before every flight, it's a good idea to make sure that these things are nice and tight. These tend to loosen up. So just take them. You don't have to take a wrench, right? Just hand tight, but grab them nice and nice and stout and, and make sure that they're tight, good to go. All right, so now access to the flight controller. Okay, the flight controller is buried under here. It's kind of hard to get to. And so what we've done is we have added a remote access here, this little extension, so you can access the uh, flight controller there. 
So that pretty much sums up the, the basics of this machine. I mean, it's real simple. It's not overly complex. If you're an FPV guy, you're gonna to take to this in a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and open up iNav. You're gonna to wanna to install, obviously, iNav on your computer. Just put the most current, uh, most current version of the GUI on your computer. Plug into here, and let's get started. All right, my friends, we are plugged into iNav. And let's show you what the next steps are. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your radio is on. If you have power in the bird, go to your receiver tab. Now, I don't happen to have my radio on. It's actually at a friend's house right now, so you have to bear with me. But when you move the throttle, roll, pitch, yaw, all the different channels, you should see movement here on these bars, and they should coordinate correctly. So, for instance, if you move throttle and you see roll, moving well obviously you've got a problem that means that your channel mapping is incorrect you can go to this drop down here and tinker around with the various options until everything matches so when you move throttle throttle moves you move yaw yaw moves and so on okay if you need to figure out what your auxiliary channels are and what they're assigned to when you move them and flip them obviously you can see them moving here on the on channels 5 through 17. It's going to be assigned to one of those. Now you have that set up in your radio it is all on your own. You've got to, If you want to change that up, you're going to have to change that up. I'm not going to explain how to do that with the scope of this video. Alright, so the next thing you do is go to modes. You're going to want to set all the modes up. Okay, uh, first one is ARM. Alright, you want to set up ARM and air mode on the same channel. So you can see in my case I've got them set to 5. Take the slider for error mode, it's probably already going to be set this way, but if it's not, take the slider for error mode and move it all the way across. Now what that's going to do is anytime you arm, air mode is active. All right, so that's very important. We suggest to set pre-arm. Pre-arm is an extra safety measure with a big cinema rig like this. It's probably a good idea to go ahead and have pre-arm set. That way, if you're out on set and somebody accidentally bumps your radio, the thing's not going to take off. <laughs> okay? So, in my case, I've got channel 9 set to pre-arm. Now, the next things you're going to need to know are return to home and position hold. Okay? For position hold, we're actually using two different modes. Navigation position hold and navigation altitude hold. Okay, set those both to the same channel and then go ahead and set them wherever you want the, you know, wherever, wherever on the switch you want it to be uh, located. So top or bottom or middle. If you wanted to do middle, for instance, you'd do it like this. Whatever your liking is. Okay, just make sure they're on the same channel. The next one's return to home. You're going to have to have another separate switch for return to home. In my case, I've got it set on channel 8. All right. Now, this is something very important, and it is unique to the whoop lifter. All right. This is a whoop, meaning that there's going to be probably more often than not, you're going to want to fly in an environment where there may be a roof over you. Uh, and then if there's a roof over you, well, you may not get GPS signal. And if you don't have GPS signal, INAV is not going to arm. You see up here where it says GPS, this is going to be red. You're not going to be able to arm. However, what we've done is we've gone into CLI and we have a code or a, a, a string of text that we've typed in, typed in, and that is going to negate the safety feature. Oh Lord, hold on a minute. Let me connect back in. Okay, we've got some, some beeping. <laughs> Apologize for the beeping. Uh, anyway, so we have set it such that the safety system that doesn't allow you to arm when you don't have GPS signal turned off. That is on purpose so that if you're indoors, you can arm. Okay, so that's pretty important. What that also means is that if you're outside, you need to wait until this thing has got a GPS lock before you take off. If you plug your battery in and just bam, take off and start going, the machine hasn't had enough time to acquire the appropriate amount of satellites to know its position. 
So if something goes wrong and you have to return to home, let's say you fail safe, you hit a null because of a power line or whatever, you fail safe, it may not return to home. It may go somewhere else, <laughs> okay? Uh, or if you try to position hold, it may not position hold correctly. So wait until you've got a, 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 a GPS lock before taking off, okay? So other than what I've already shown you, there is a couple other things that we will let you go in and change without voiding your warranty. Uh, the first of which is return to home altitude. You can see it's set to centimeters. I have no idea why they use this unit of measure, but it is what it is. Thank you, INAB developers. But anyway, so they use centimeters. We've got it set to 5,000. You can set it you know, to something different. Make sure you don't go over 400 feet per FAA rules or if you're in some other country, you have to abide by the rules of your country. Um, but you can set that to something different. Let's say that you have some sort of structure that if you were to return to home, it, you, you'd hit it or something. So you can alter that, no problem. Another thing that we allow you to go in and change is your rates, all right? Rates are something that is a personal preference. So have at it, change your rates to whatever you like. Other than that, that's pretty much the only things we're going to allow you to change without voiding your warranty. All right, guys, so if you have any other questions about the INAF portion of this, you can email us at info at catalystmachineworks.com or support at catalystmachineworks.com, and uh, we'll get it all answered for you. So good luck with your whoop lifter. Have fun and go make some money.